Hello, welcome to the channel. Welcome to Top of the World. I've got a plan. Now I've nearly finished this side. I've very nearly finished this side. However, this is in my way. This corner of scaffolding needs to come out. And I'll tell you why it needs to come out. Because when the snow comes off of this corner of the reef, it smashed all this section all the way down last winter. And now I've removed all the scaffolding from here because I'm done, as you can see. How stunning is that? Well, I'm done all down to the bottom. I'm not done here. I, I have to do concrete and all along here. But anyway, I've got a bit where this last bit of scaffolding is to come out. And then really I want this corner out of the way because what it does is it really causes me a problem with ploughing the snow. And then it causes me a problem in the spring with the melt and the, it all, anyway, so, if we go around here, my plan over the next week or two is to get this top tier down from here, which means I have to finish all the work up here. Well, my plan to get this corner out of the way is to take the scaffolding down to this post here, which means now I have to paint all the way down here, two coats, and that will allow me to get that corner completely out of the way which will really help. And then I can start building on the next elevation. So I've been working on these big windows here. I've got two of them in this morning. This one is boarded up, that one there's boarded up, two new windows in. That one at the top's finished. So if I can fix the holes up here and paint all the way up there, or I can get that tier all the way down to this one, which will make it a lot more stable for the winter. And then if I decide to come around this way and put this side scaffolding up, which is the third elevation of the building. If I decide to build the scaffolding up this side, I have to go all the way to the top and put a reef on it. Otherwise the snow will just smash it to pieces. Just like the other side was. I have to go all the way up and then I have to put an extension to the reef so that everything slides over. But I'd really like to get that top tier of the scaffolding down. So, I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna base coat. all the way across to this post, all the way up. And that section of under roof there, so I can take all this scaffolding down. I'm gonna have to put cross braces in there, take these ones off, move them over, and then we'll be good. And he's gonna have to be by himself, because uh, I'm gonna have to go up there. What I'm gonna do is get the base coat on up the top there, then I can come back and I can take this section of scaffolding down and then I can get the base coat on through here. So I'm, I'm, I'm finished all the way down, except where that bit of wood runs and this one. I've just got this last section under these two windows finished. All the glass is replaced. All the windows are fully renovated. We're looking good. We are looking good. All right, let's get on with that. Probably not the best light, being as the sun's moved. Anyway, that's the first time in two and a half years there's been no scaffolding up on there. So I've got to do the lower part of the drain pipe. Everything's under top coat. All this has got to be, all these have got to be removed and all this has got to be concreted up. But a deliberate mistake. I forgot to put trims on this window. I've got the trims to the window, they're inside. It just would have been easier to do it off the scaffolding before I took it down. See the trims either side, not on the window. Right, so that's all down. And then, as I said, I've painted top to bottom around this corner. On the bottom there, all the way to the top. And put where you can see the old paint, new paint. And I've done part way across the very top. You can see new paint, old paint where I finished there. Wow. Well, that's going to make life a lot easier in the winter and a lot less stressful. Good job. Where's the dog? He just loves being in the car. Yeah. 
even in the old one that don't work no more. Right, so how far am I going to get? I've started to pile the wood around this side, but I'd really like to believe I could get this side up before the snow comes. But anyway, I don't know. We'll pile a load more wood around there. Is that my next delivery of plastic coming? Uh, they're about wrapping up at the railway bridge. And uh, I've got a lot more stuff coming. I don't know. Right, good job. Pack up, go eat. And then, uh, look how beautiful it is. Very little wind. Probably go fishing. Right. So I've got to, got to put this drain pipe back. This drain pipe has been broken. Really, you can see the way, the way the ground slopes back towards the building. This whole area needs grading. So this is the main water runoff. For those that you don't know, the yard fills up with snow and in the spring, this is just a river. However, up against the building, it all runs the wrong way. And this is not good. This is not good at all. So the idea is to remove all these. There was windows or is windows behind there, but they're boarded up on the inside. And I concrete them up and then I can regrade this entire area away from the building. Anyway, when it rains, these huge drain pipes here and this one here, well, before they just used to empty onto these rocks. Well, I've had them facing out here to try it where you can see there's a gully there to try and get the water away. So I've got to take that off and repair the drain pipe. And then really they want pipes running out. Now the problem is, in the winter, these pipes all freeze solid anyway. And the other problem is, is when you're clearing snow, you rip the pipes off. So I'm going to have to do something temporary again until I get all this graded. And then you won't have to clear the snow, it will just all run off. Anyway. And have I replaced that window yet? No, that got broken when the ice came off here and the scaffold was in there two years ago. So we went through all last winter with that window broken. I've got to do that. Anyway, there we go. Jobs are good. It's day two of the painting and the scaffolding removal. Well, I don't need to remove any more. I've done that last night. Anyway, it's nice and early in the morning. Sun hits this spot beautifully. So as if I didn't know from the main scaffolding I took down, after being up two Arctic winters, these cheap screws are snapping. And there's certain makes of screws that snap and certain makes of screws that don't snap. But would they have done a third winter? No. So with all that in mind, the fact that I built this homemade wooden scaffolding, which is good enough for me, and the screws are snapping, I've come to the very highest elevation. We're right at the very top of the building. There it is. Well, it's quite dangerous up there, you might think. Yeah. So I made it more dangerous by adding a ladder. Because I'm just not, I'm just not happy enough that, it's a little too safe, if you know what I mean. So I thought I would just add a ladder because I just ain't quite tall enough to reach that little bit up there. So, uh, we're going to get on and paint under here. Two coats, base coat, top coat. There's that little window you often see. What's in the little window? Well, nothing really, that's the attic in there. You only ever go there when you need to clean the chimneys out. Anyway, you can see the difference here. What is with all the noise today? Oh. We should be done with traffic today now then. You can see the new coats and the old. Right, well we're gonna put a base coat all the way across this section. And then hopefully today, also get a top coat on it. What? 
like that. Right, there's no end to that, so I'm in a zip. It's all loose. All right, when you lean on that, that's gonna move. That's it. That took about three hours. So we're all, we're all painted up here now. This whole top elevation is painted right down there. So I think now it's time to remove this entire top layer. And the reason I'm gonna take this down in sections is um, the snow loading. If I take this lift off, that'll be another load of weight that's off of the um, the uprights. So not only do I not need to get up here again, I'm still contemplating on this window. Anyway, not this year. So I'm going to take this entire top lift off down and the rest of the scaffolding will stay through the winter because I want to make some alterations down there, but I'll probably paint all the way down to the next lift. Birds for years ever since we've been here this building has been attacked by birds for years it's been attacked by birds and i can't work out how they managed to stick on the walls and drill holes well i can show you I've oh no i can't show you anyway i can't um so what happens is up here they kind of drill holes in here and in there and other places I fixed them all now, repaired them. So as the building gets older, I mean, it's built in the 40s. Right? It's never been repainted. I know this. I know it's never been repainted. Right? I can show you how it, I know it's never been repainted. I'm getting a fan call from Senegal. <laughs> Do you really think that's worth answering? Uh, no. Hello? Do you need a new TV? Uh, no. Can I help you with some loans? Uh, no. Right, so you can see the original white undercoat and the slight overspray. I've painted it by hand now, which has really smoothed it off and taken away. Anyway, over time, we'll, we'll go down and show you some of the old stuff. All right, here's a really good example. And it, the birds, they can get their little claws into where it started to deteriorate. When it's nice and smooth, like it is up there, all right, they've got nothing to hold on to. So the older it gets, the more they can get their claws in there and hang on to the building. There we go, now the difference in the paint is very obvious. Thank you very much. Look at that, stunning. How's your back, Simon? Do you know, well, anybody that's got a back knows you have good moments and bad moments. And I was just getting better from doing my back when I put those potatoes in in May or June or whenever it was. And, uh, or oh, he lift one of those cast iron radiators. Anyway, it's a bit better today. Right, that's the top lift off. That's a good job, those. And the, the other two windows have got to go in there and there. They just need cleaning up, ready to go in. So um, what I'll probably do is I'll probably give that an undercoat and top coat of paint on that lift. And then I can put the trims on this window, unlike when I've forgotten the size. Anyway. That's time for coffee now. Middle of the day, there we go. Just stop for a cup of coffee, power goes off. Well, I, I, I don't know how many times I've said this about this place, I've never known anywhere. Right, there's no excuse. 
Right, there's no snow or ice build up on the electricity lines. Power off. Now what I've got to do is start watching the clock. So fortunately, of course, it's the boiler's not on or the furnace is not running. So my biggest concern then is freezers. And like I explained to you, when the power goes off, uh, you don't have any water either. Day three. Scaffold down. I've tied it up along the bottom here. I still haven't done this down pipe. I've got to do that. Well, I have tied it up. So other than that down pipe there, which I've got to do, this side's finished for now. Done, all the windows back in. All the weatherproofing in. Corner gone. Corner gone. I saw me take down that other lift. And then this morning, we'll go somewhere where we can't see. This morning I put the last of the windows in and finished painting down to that lift. All right, see all that? The windows are in up there now. And all that's painted all the way down to that left. Right, then I've done something really silly. Oh no, what's all that? Well, hmm. You know what that means, don't you? But I've got an idea to make it a bit more interesting. I'm going to put the scaffolding up, depending on how I go on time. I've got two more jobs that absolutely must be finished for other people before winter. Come, at Come. Um, now I know where you want to go. Right. He wants to go and spray the trees. He likes to expand his territory. Anyway, they're doing work on the bridge up there, so normally there'd be no traffic on this road whatsoever. And uh well, there is, anyway. So what I thought I might do, I want to make it a bit more interesting, because if I start this, I've got to go all the way. I've got to go from the ground two top, put the roof on, secure it all off, put extra braces on and uh, weather it out over the winter. Now if I'm going to do that, if I'm going to do that, I'm going to pop the old Land Cruiser in the middle there, stick the tripod on the roof and film it all. Now it will take me, realistically, four or five days to get this lot up. That's how long it takes. So uh, yeah, we'll see how that pans out. But anyway, even if I don't get that done, I am now finished on the outside for the winter. Right, we're talking about winter. Right, we're still in August. Look, blue sky, sun shining. No, there'll be snow on the ground in six weeks. So, snow on the ground by mid-October. And that'll be it. So, uh, September's a, um, a nice month. There's no more bugs. Well, there's no bugs anyway. The mosquitoes are gone. I don't know where they're gone, but they're gone. The mosquitoes are gone. See, I haven't done any rough cutting or nothing like this. And the reason for that being is I can't put the bushwhacker on my back with the weight and the twisting. It just, it's not good. So normally I would have cut all this. All this would be cut down, but I can't get, I've got quite a lightweight one as well. I just can't get it on my back because it's the twisting. Anyway. Oh, I've put his ball in my pocket. There's a story about this. Should I tell a story? We was out walking last night, and this is Arctic Care. Right, it's got white feet already. And uh, I'll spread it out to him. Off he's gone. Hair's gone. He's gone. Anyway, obviously out of my sight, somewhere along the line, the hair turned into a brand new tennis ball. And he came running back with this brand new tennis ball. Where's he got that from? I don't understand. Where's he got that from? I'll show you what was delivered this morning. I've got one, one over there, that big white sack. These were delivered this morning. <coughs> well, they're the roofing sections from the bridge. And this is the wall in. And I can see some more reefing in there. And wall in there. So, uh, if I wanted to wrap an exceedingly large building, like a school or a theatre, if I wanted to, I could.
because I asked. Where's it going to go? Well, they don't go to landfill there. Plastic gets burned. So, uh, yeah, what a waste. And it's like that roofing stuff. That's been unrolled from huge rolls. Oh, I can show you because they're clearing up to, to pack up huge rolls. And um, it's literally gone up on the roof. There's no overspray on the roof. And come down again. And, and that's it. It's waste. It's no good anymore. Anyway, I love it. So have a lot of wood there. Ready to go in. Right, so this is the bridge works. Now we're all packing up now. Yeah, disassembling all the stuff. Anyway, these white rolls on top. That's what that is. That's that plastic. Now, I have been tempted to ask about these, but they palletised them up. All that is Burt's ply. But I think they send it from job to job. Anyway, so next job. And then we're on to testing the switches in the box. But next job, do I want to do this? This is my own fault, okay? Now I'd moaned continuously about this damn machine. No, this is 100% my own fault. As the camera adjusted. Shredded belt. Well, why is the belt shredded, Simon? Well, it's not because the chassis at the back has fallen apart, because we've reinforced that. And it's not because the axle's fallen off, because we've welded that on. And it's not because the engine's moved, because we've put that back on and welded a new subframe to it. We've done all of that, it's none of that. That is a direct result of me doing something I always tell everybody I won't do, and that's cutting long grass. So here in the summer, you must, you must cut the grass every two weeks. Anyway, there was some confusion, and I didn't, and I've gone to cut grass, and it's too long and too heavy, and it puts too much wear and tear on my machine, and it's cost me a belt and, I don't know, an hour to replace it. I wish, I wish I just stuck to my rules. And if somebody says, no, actually, I don't want the grass cut, don't cut it. Because when you, but, but then, then there's a downside to that. If you don't cut the grass, in the spring, when you have to do the first cut, you have to go through the same scenario. There isn't one garden that I don't cut that I have to cut three times on the first cut in the spring because it's so long. Anyway, I messed up. My own fault, I'm, I messed up firstly with communication, right? Rule number one, my fault, shouldn't do that, don't normally do that. Messed up with communication, and then instead of going and cutting the top off it at its highest setting, which is what you'd do in the spring, and then you would, I didn't, I went straight in there thinking, and I've I, I got to do that. Have I got a belt? No, oh, I don't know. We'll see. I didn't buy one. I'm hoping I've got a belt lying around that's somewhere near that length. Anyway, that's that job. And then we're gonna go and put the test meter across this and um, work these switches out. So as a continued update, it jumps around all over the place. As a continued update, I'm on the phone of my brother yesterday. My brother lives in England. Obviously, this is all English, start motors in England. And uh, he can get me one. I mean, I know he can get me one. He just, you know, I could get me one, but then I've got to deal with it. But he's there and he's in anyway, so. I think we'll just get a new start motor and find out what's caused that one to burn out twice because there's no point in having it repaired again. It's just pointless. Right, what am I doing? Deck, door mower. This is a, I don't suppose for one minute the lighting is very good in this scenario. I don't suppose it is, but anyway. So this is where the old man pulls out his his wobbly old ladder and climbs up in his old stores full of a load of old crap and sifts for all his shit to see if he can find a belt the same size as that. Now, that kind of thing is usually reserved for comedy sketches. Oh, that's way too big. in a minute you can see that coming can't you well, I'll take that one as well right well that was a relatively easy fix that's on there will it work yeah will it last as long as the original no because it's much smaller but who knows how long this one is how old this one is it's quite chewed up but anyway we should be able to finish the season out on that this is the last grass cut I've just got to cut everywhere one last time and that's done there's no more grass going now Everything's just dying off. As you can see, it's finished. I know a lot of you is like, um, what's he talking about? It's August. It's 
beautiful. Yeah. No. Oh no. That is that is it. The leaves are going on the tree. Well, leaves are falling off. So, uh, yeah. Well, what, what am I doing? Um, well, we, it's nice. I might just go and finish that grass because it's in a mess. I only got half got done, and then I'll come back and get in that box with the old test meter and see what's causing the problem. Well, how did that do? Well, I was winging it, obviously. Basically spent the old time, it's shredded already. You know, it's a car fan belt, it wasn't even on the right way. It spent the whole time burning, all I could smell was burning rubber. And I could only use a quarter of the width of the deck. So, you know, I just wasted my time.